Hey guys, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So today we're going to take a look at using the IntelliJ debugger. And this is an example that I was working on for my Spring Core course and showing how to use Timeleaf and some validation technology in Timeleaf and how it works with the binding properties in Spring. So let me step you through in IntelliJ what I was looking at. I'm going to toggle over here to IntelliJ now. Okay, so for my course, I had a, a customer domain object, and I've refactored that to use a command object for customer form. I've put in a validation in here for not empty on, on username. And in the customer controller, down on line 56, I've passed in the at valid annotation for, on customer form and the binding result to check to see if that, that binding has any errors. And if it has any errors, I want to return back to the customer form. So let's take a look at the behavior of what's going on right now. So I have the web application up in Spring Boot already. I'm going to go into a new customer and I'm going to hit submit. And my expectation was to see an error displayed on screen there, but I'm getting this error message here about evaluating this the Spring expression. So let's take a look at the console on this. I'm going to toggle back over to IntelliJ. And bring up the console here. And I'm getting a, a neither binding result nor plain target object found for being named customer. It's available at, as a request app attribute. So I'm now, now I'm looking at my code here. I'm expecting to go back to customer form and bind an empty value for customer to this. And this isn't happening for some reason. So I need to take a peek under the covers and see what's going on. And I can do this through IntelliJ. And what I've done is I've put a breakpoint in in the Timeleaf template engine. And it, I've got line 1060 here. I just have a, a debugging breakpoint. So let's take a look, see what's going on, on with that. And to do that, I need to shut down Tomcat. And I'm going to bring it back up. So if you look in the top right of IntelliJ, I, I have my normal run configuration. I have my debug configuration. So I'm going to bring it up and debug. And you can see it's a little bit slower to start up when we're running a debug. There is additional overhead there. So I'm going to go back over to Chrome now. And let's go back to the list. And refresh that. That should trigger the breakpoint. And I'm just going to go ahead and scroll by that. New customer. That's also going to trigger the breakpoint. I'm going to go by that one. Now let's do submit. This will also trigger the breakpoint, but I want to see what's going on in the context. So I'm going to bring up, bring this up and take a closer look at it. And if I go to the context variables, you can see I have an object here, web variables map. And I'm going to scroll through here. And the way spring binding, so we have a spring binding result customer form. I'm inspecting this object and I can see that it does have the errors property of one. So it's complaining about username, may not be empty. So let's take a closer look at my, my application code. So the property comes in as customer form and it returns back to the view. Let's take a look at the timely view. Now I can see where my, my problem was. So I refactored from customer to customer form. Timeleaf is looking for customer form as the object not customer. So it was looking for customer versus customer form. This is an error that I introduced in the refactoring of it. So let's go ahead and run this again. I'm going to shut down the debugger and bring it back up normally. I go back to the list. I'm up normally. We're not in debug anymore. I'm going to go to new customer. And I hit an error. Let's take a, a closer look at the error. Now we're, we're getting customer form not found. Let's take a quick look at the controller. And when I do the new, I also need to set customer form here as well as an attribute. So I'm binding an empty customer form object on, on the new. So let's take a, a closer look at that. And actually... Since I, I can, should be able to, to rebuild the project here. You see that Spring Boot is restarting. 
I'm going to go back to the list. New customer. That's not working. I'm going to bounce Spring Boot now. So I do have the Spring Boot developer tools implemented. Sometimes the restart doesn't work quite right. And you, you actually do have to bounce it. So that's what I'm doing now. So we are back up and running. I'll bounce over here. Back to my list. So I can display the list normally. There's my customer. Smith. And there's my errors object. Okay, so this is an example of using the IntelliJ debugger to take a look to see what's going on on the cover. So this error was caused by me. I refactored some things. I went from customer to customer form. And the, the way the whole binding errors stuff works is tied off that bean name. So I was getting a couple values in there for customer and customer form. And because the customer form one is the one that had the binding errors on it, when Timeleaf was looking to display the errors information, it, it couldn't find it because in the template I was binding to customer and customer was just a new empty object without any errors. I didn't see that error originally. I wasn't quite sure by what was going on, but through the use of the IntelliJ debugger, I was able to take a look, see what, what was in the web model, all the properties and the attributes in that web model and do figure out what, what was wrong with that. So hopefully if you ever get in the situation where you need to debug and see what's going on in the spring model that's being presented to the timely view layer, you can use the IntelliJ debugger to bring up a list of all the objects and go through that and see what's really going on and why timely might not be happy about something.